You know, for years I used layer blend modes and I had no idea what they were and what I was doing with them. And occasionally I'll get lucky. Uh, quite often I wouldn't as well. But we're going to fix all that now. Rather than you do what I did and spend all that time learning, we're going to go through them. We're going to try and demystify them. And we're going to try and make sure that by the end of this, you have a clear understanding of what they are. And you need to know if you are a digital photographer or you're working with digital photographs, you need to know about layer modes. They are vital for modern photography. All right, let's get started. We'll come to our layers palette and we'll create a new layer. Then we're going to come down to generator and we're going to create some clouds. You'll see why soon. Okay, primary color, secondary color. Okay. So now I've got a whole load of black and white blobs over the screen. I want to make those a little bit more contrasty so we can see what we're doing with them. So I'll come to color adjustments, levels, drop that on. Make the darks a bit darker, lights a bit lighter. So we've got a good contrasty image for us to work with. Let's make that invisible for a second. I've also got a layer with a gradient, white, down to black, plus a white circle, a mid gray circle, a black circle, and I've got my underlying layer. All right, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my topmost layer, click on it, and I'm going to call it cloud. So we know what we're looking at. Right, let's make the blobs visible. All right, so what are layers? What do they do? This layer here, the blobs layer, at the moment is in normal blending mode. Now we've been using normal blending mode for everything we've done so far, but look at this lot. You've got all this one, dark and linear burn, light and overlay, all these various different ones here. That's what confused me for many years. I thought, well, there's no particular reason as to why they call these what they do. I'm not sure what they do. And well, they're just a bit confusing. But if you look at them, you'll see, if you can see it on the video, they're organized according to groups. You've got normal and solve at the top. We've been using normal all the time. Then you've got this group here, dark and multiply color, but you've got this group here, light and screen, overlay, that's another group, difference exclusion, blah, blah, blah. And at the bottom, you've got another group. Let's go through these very quickly. This lot here, generally speaking, makes things darker. This lot here makes things lighter. This bunch here makes things more contrasty. So this lot here are known as the comparative group. You tend not to use them so much. And the ones at the bottom, they're known as the composite group and you use some of these. Of these, there's only really five or six you use a lot in digital photography. You use this one, normal. You use this one, multiply. You use this one, screen. You use this one, overlay. You also use color and luminosity from the bottom ones. We're gonna go through those. Okay, I'm going to come to my shapes and I'm going to move them over so we get a clear idea of what we're looking at. And I can zoom in a little bit more without panning all over the screen and confusing you. So the first mode we want to take a look at is from the darken group and it's called multiply. Right, what's happened there? It's starting to affect the underlying layer with what's on top. Now the white, as you can see, becomes invisible. The black becomes completely black, but also the gray is making things underneath it darker. Take a look at my white to black gradient. The top bit goes invisible. The bottom bit, completely visible and completely black. But if you take a look here, it's making what lies underneath it darker. Going to make that layer invisible for a second. I'm going to call it my clouds layer. I'm going to turn that to multiply as well. See what's happening there? The black areas stay black, the white areas became invisible, and the bits in between are making the underlying layer darker. Let's take a look at some more of these darker modes. Well, look, you've got dark in here. That gives kind of a monochromy, two gray thing there. Color burn. Now, we covered the burn tool in a previous video, and the more you use it, the more intense the colors get, till eventually you would end up with a black. That's what's happening here. The lighter areas are unaffected, as you get towards darker greys, the colors underneath are getting stronger until eventually you get down to black. You can compare that with something like, let's go ahead a bit, color dodge. That's working like the dodge tool, but on the entire layer. The darker levels are unaffected. The lighter greys are starting to get more blown out, a little bit lighter, a little bit less saturated. So that's what 
these two modes do. Color burn and color dodge. Linear burn, similarly, but gives a slightly stronger effect and darker color. Okay, what's happening there is anything above a certain threshold is invisible. Anything below a certain threshold, well, you just see the layer on top. Okay, let's take a look at the lighten modes. Come down to this, what, one, two, third patch down here. Now, the one I spoke about was screen, but let's go to lighten first. You can see what's happening here. The white bits stay white. The black bits disappear in between. The mid gray start to make the underlying layer a little bit lighter. Take a look at our gradient here. Complete white, completely opaque. The mid grays to dark grays, they're affecting the underlying layer. And eventually when you get down to black, it's completely invisible. Not the most pleasing effect. Let's compare that with screen. See, that's more usable. All right, you're getting complete white there, but also you're getting a slightly nicer gradation going down towards the grays there. Now, color dodge, we did cover that just a short while ago. Linear dodge, similar to color dodge, but a little bit more extreme and lighter color. Anything above a certain threshold stays the same. Anything below a certain threshold gradually gets more transparent. Let's try that mode using clouds. Come up to clouds. Light color. See, there's our threshold. Okay, we've got an image here. We're going to do something practical with this. We're going to come to our background layer. We're going to duplicate it. And we're going to set this, as before, to multiply. Bang. See what happened? All the darker values just got darker. That's what multiply does. It's very good for increasing the dark areas of a photograph. All you do is just duplicate the layer, stick it to multiply, bang. If that's too dark to you, Take a look here. Under blending, you've got this thing, opacity. This is the first of three big points about layers. At the moment, it's 100%. It doesn't have to be. It can be 0%. Look, I've just made it invisible by changing the opacity down to 0%. But I can slide it up to wherever I want. Now, this is something I recommend you do. Watch this action, learn it well, and remember it. When it's on 100%, knock it down to 0. Then bring it up. That way you don't end up throwing the kitchen sink at your photographs and trying to make the effects too strong. This is how you control your effects. Okay, I'm going to get to about there, 60, 68%. That's fine. I'm going to come to my background layer. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to take it up to the top. And I'm going to change its mode to screen. And now my lights have got lighter. Again, with this one, knock it down to 0%. Gradually bring it up like that to about wherever you want it. Now, my problem here is, well, I would like the inside of the shoes to be a bit lighter, but if I take it all the way up, then the floor tiles, they're looking way too bright. So I'm going to take it to about 50%. Here's the second of the three big things about layer mode. You can use them with layer masks. So come up, right click, add mask. What I'm going to do with this particular one, I'm going to come to edit, come to fill. And I want a nice deep black. OK, that's made that entire layer invisible. But if I come to my paintbrush tool, we have covered this in a previous tutorial. And I change to white. Now, when I come in, let's check what brush I'm using. Let's find you show brushes. I want a nice. Yes, I've got a nice soft brush. Now, when I come inside the shoes, I'm revealing that part of the layer mask and just the inside is getting to be much lighter. So again, just to go quickly through it, what we've got, this layer is in screen mode. It's on at 72%. It's all been masked out by the layer mask, but now I'm painting back in areas using my paintbrush. How cool is this. Now this is getting a little bit brighter. And also I'm starting to smear over certain edges, but as before, like we've done before, using the layer mask tutorial, we can always paint back out the areas we don't want by using black. We're working very fast with this. And not only can we do that, we can also now control the capacity, knock it back down to zero again. Bring it up slow to where you want it to go. How much control is this? 
Third big thing about layer modes. They affect the appearance of what's underneath them, but they don't actually alter the underlying thing. If I make these invisible, there's my original image. Now, with other tutorials, I've been duplicating my background layer because whenever I make changes to it, those changes are permanent. Can't take them back. But with layer modes, you can turn them on or turn them off. If I wanted to make the darker areas even darker, I can duplicate it and it's got even darker there. Then I can control the opacity of that. I can fine tune this, but our original image isn't changed, just the appearance of it by what lies on top of it. Okay, we're back with our two boys in the bouncy castle. Now we've done make the darks darker with all of this lot and we use mainly multiply. And we also made all the lights lighter with this bunch and we mainly used screen. Just take a look with those. With multiply, the black is completely black. Can't see any of the underlying image. With screen, the white is completely white. Can't see anything of the underlying image. Let's come to our next lot. This lot here, which we mainly use overlay. Now, these modes make the darks darker and the lights lighter. So they are the contrast modes. But if you notice with overlay, Okay, the lights got lighter, but they're not completely white. The darks have got darker, but in places they're not completely black. With multiply and screen, Pixelmator favors those layers. What it means is they tell the underlying layer what it's going to be. Thank you very much. But with overlay, Pixelmator favors the underlying layer. That means the underlying layer is getting a message from the layer on top, the overlay layer, saying, well, you've got to be lighter, but it's deciding how light it's going to be. Thank you very much. Let's just take a look at our clouds. Put them into overlay mode. As you can see, you're not getting a completely dark and a completely light image. You're getting a little bit of give in there, a little bit of reserve. That's what makes overlay useful. But let's have a quick look at the others. Soft light. OK, it's like overlay, but a little bit less intense. I like using that myself as well. So, OK, mainly overlay, but also soft light. Hard light. OK, it's not mucking around there. It's getting a real contrast in there. Vivid light. OK, that looks like a cross between dodge and burn, all in the same wonderful package. Linear light. Mm, OK, maybe we can use that at some point. Pin light. Mm, OK, that's looking a little bit uh, intense. That looks like a mixture of the lighter color and the darker color. Hard mix. Wow, getting some pretty strong postery type of images there. Just have a quick look at those again and you'll see that, OK, they're all called different names, but they are related to what's gone before. That's just simply more contrasty. Vivid light is just like a mixture of color dodge and color burn and so on and so forth. You can see they're all related and one, after a while you start to understand what they're actually doing. Once you understand it, you'll be able to use them with confidence. It will improve your photography. All right, so what are we left with? We're left with these ones. OK, these are called the comparative group where Pixelmator compares the pixel above with the pixel below. You tend not to use these that much. I'm not going to spend too much time with these. But one thing I will do, just very quickly, I'll create a new layer. Come to my background layer, plus here, create a new layer. And I'm going to fill this. I'm going to fill this with 128, 128. 128. So I've got red, green, and blue all at 128. That is neutral gray or mid gray. Uh, click OK with that. Then I want to change it to difference. Wow. A lot of effects going on there. If you're going to use one of them, difference, yeah, you do tend to use them a little bit more. What difference does is it compares what's going on beneath and what's going above it. And if the two pixels are the same value, all the neutral gray images will come out as black. The further away from it, it starts putting down rather strange colors. As you can see there, it's more of a special effect thing. It's also useful for finding the neutral gray of an image as well, if you need to do that. We can always cover that in a later tutorial. Okay, you lovely people still with me? We're nearly there now. 
The last two modes I want to discuss today, color and luminosity. Right, so I'm going to create a new layer. For now, I'm just going to leave it at normal. Find a paintbrush. I'm going to pick a color. I'm going to pick me, let's see, a kind of tan brown color there. And I'm going to start painting here. So I'm putting down a solid area of color. Also, I'll choose some, I'll choose a slightly lighter brown by putting it around here. Okay, I'm doing a very fast, very crude job. I'm not using selections. Maybe I'll use a bit of a rubber because I just can't stand to see that. Take it around like that. I'll do a little bit more with that, but first, I want to take that, change it from normal mode, and I'm going to change it to color mode. Look what's happened. Now you're getting the darks and the lights from all the underlying images from my, remember we did this? The screen layer, the multiplier layer, but this, the color, is now showing all those layers underneath. If you've wanted to know how to recolor a vintage photograph in black and white to color again, this would be how you do it. Set up a color layer, put your colors on there. Let's try another one. Let's try, come back to our paintbrush, come to red, and let's make this belt buckle nice and red. You can see, you can paint on it, and you're getting some nice tones on there. Pick the rubber, trim it, and there's no reason why you couldn't have one layer for, say, red, another layer for blues, another layer for skin tones or whatever, and gradually build up the image that way. Right, and we're on to our last one, which is going to be luminosity. All right, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to right-click this layer and duplicate it. I want this to be more contrasty, so I'm going to use curves. We've done this in a previous tutorial. I'm going to do the curves and do the S shape basically means you get a more contrasty image. But as we've discussed in the previous tutorial, you're getting these very strong concentrated colors. You don't want that. So we're going to take this and we're going to change it from normal mode to luminosity. Now you're getting the dark and light values because we put curves on there, but it's not affecting how intense the colors are in the background. Let's make it invisible. You can see it's the same level of intensity. Also, take a look at this picture. You'll see this kind of effect again and again and again in various different magazines on the internet or whatever. Knocked back color, but a fairly good contrast. So listen, come closer. I'm going to tell you a little secret. All right. So many of these wonderful effects that you see in magazines and also in photo studios, you know how they come up with them? They're done using layer modes. And in the time it took you to watch this video, you've just learned what took me years to learn. Now I'll do some more tutorials using layer modes. And if you've never used them before, you're about to become a whole lot better at digital photography. See you soon. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.